Good afternoon from SeaWorld Orlando. Today we're here for a media day for the brand new Penguin Trek coaster opening very, very soon. We'll tell you more about it once we head inside. Do you see this? What is this? What are we looking at right now? No, please don't, please don't. I'm gonna throw a snowball at you so bad. <laughs> Please don't. They, uh, they brought in some real snow. I mean, I'm sure they made it. I don't think it's imported, like, it's actually right from... from Antarctica. It's what? They told me it's right from Antarctica. Is that where the penguins are from? Yes. Like I said before, today we are at SeaWorld for a preview day, a announcement day for Penguin Trek, a new family coaster that's opening here at SeaWorld in spring of 2024. We have a track debut a bunch of like snow which is kind of really weird to see here in Orlando I haven't seen snow since like at least last year when I was <laughs> up in Chicago now I don't know if this character is a newer character but we just met Puck I actually I'm a big fan of the Solar Bears which is a local hockey team here and let me just say you seem a lot more friendly than Shades their mascot I'm excited for the coaster I hope you get to ride Okay, can we do like a little promo, like do like a zoom in out type? Now Penguin Trek is a new coaster that's opening in spring of 2024. It is a family launch coaster produced by B&M. It has two launches, a height requirement of 42 inches. It's a 65 maximum height and track length up to upwards to 3,000 feet. This is gonna be one big coaster fitting in the space that like we've we've been to this space before. Now this is going to be in the Antarctica section with the like ride finale, literally ending and letting off into the like penguin enclosure, which is probably my favorite part of all of SeaWorld here. So I'm very, I am happy it's gonna get more foot traffic through there, especially the fact that like there was a dark ride that existed there that is no longer there and they're just utilizing the space that has not been utilized for quite a bit of time. But I'm very, very happy to see another coaster here at SeaWorld. Hopefully it'll add more dynamics to uh, a lineup of coasters that has a lot of intense stuff. Um, I still haven't done Icebreaker though, which is one of the coasters here. I, st I still have to do that. From a preview of a new SeaWorld coaster, to a fairly new coaster. We are, <laughs> we've made it to Magic Kingdom. Let's go ride Tron. We're doing Tron, a light show, AKA a faster version of Test Track. Uh, Tron is a thrilling light cycle ride. It's a high speed roller coaster type ride on motorcycle style vehicles inside a dark, Com computerized world with sharp turns, sudden drafts, and stops. <laughs> How was that? Bring the Tron characters back. Tron. They ha they have came out for DVC, so it is possible. Who are the Tron characters? I don't know. Do the Tron characters look like this? I uh, I wanted to dress up for uh, my preview as the Tron guy. I don't know if you saw on Tosh.0 back in the day. There's a guy who's a Tron guy. You don't know. I want to dress like this. Would have been funny. I didn't do it though. You know, there comes a point in my vlogging journey where I think it's it's about time to admit when I may have been slightly wrong. And I will admit, uh, I do enjoy Tron more than I did originally when it opened. We did have a lot of gripes with the ride itself. Uh, and one that still is very present is the starting and stopping. The brake runs in here are a little intense for a coaster that's like, brand new, very smooth, but I really do appreciate the ride a lot more, especially now that we like pretty much exclusively request the first row. If you're not doing the first row, I don't, it's not, it's not as good. The first row is the absolute best. If you didn't want to know exactly what I'm referencing, we were here during the previews and we did like a review type video because that was the one thing we could think of doing, you know? And we gave a not so stellar review, even to the point where when I came back for a second preview, uh, I had cast members saying, hey, thanks for coming back uh, because they had seen the video. I'm pretty sure. I don't want to assume, but also, Video got a lot of a lot of traction on that, which you know it is what it is. We also did have one other piece of planned content during the previews, which was one of my signature things at Disney World. They gave me diarrhea videos. Uh, that one did not end up coming out because I don't know the food was just like really underwhelming. That was here. It was going to be some of the Tron food, or maybe it wasn't open. I don't know. The gag that I was going to do was going to be me doing a test seat and then having some stuff splatter against the wall, like the wall that's right behind there with a sign. Yeah, that's what it was going to be. Uh, did not end up happening, obviously. And I, I'm done with the series, I told you guys, I'm done. And you know who doesn't believe me? Brady still does not believe me that I'm done with that series. But I mean... But I mean it, I mean it. Brady, what are the odds that I'm actually done with the diarrhea series? Zero percent. Why do you say that? You say it like, 
once a week. <laughs> Do I say this off video as well? Yes. And I mean it. Uh huh. Yeah, I'll believe it when I see it. All right, I've been caught. Uh, this is actually filmed beforehand. That's uh, and I have to admit that because I stopped at the lunching pad to get a breakfast like bowl. Let me tell you exactly what's in here. This is the breakfast burrito bowl, which is potato barrels topped with che a cheese omelet, chili corn carne queso, and sour cream. I left out the sour cream because sour cream is gross. They also have a sticky bubble bread uh, for breakfast, which is sweet bread rolled in cinnamon caramel and warm spices, which I did not end up getting because that is too much food and I'm probably gonna be getting a, uh, a waffle later. So I gotta not, not do that. Now at first glance, I don't know how appetizing this looks to a lot of people, mainly because the egg I don't think is like, I think it's like a mixed egg, which is like normally what they do here at Disney, but I, I'm gonna I'm gonna do it, and I love the the tater tots that they have. I'm like almost everything, like the loaded tater tots over at Woody's Lunchbox. My favorite, one of my favorite, actually my favorite thing at all of studios probably. Okay, guys, watch me pretend like this is my first bite, even though it's clearly not. Here we go. First impressions, it's a little cold. That's because I <laughs> spent the first 10 minutes filming stuff. And that's what happens. And if somebody pretends like that's not the case, they're a liar. This is super solid. Uh, it's definitely better than like going and doing like a, um, a breakfast sandwich at Starbucks. And the line is a lot shorter. And it's something different. And it's something new-ish, new-ish. Seven out of 10. While we are waiting in line for Peter Pan, let me hear everybody's best Peter Pan impression. Here we go. <laughs> okay, Sarah's gonna do a hook impression. It's me. I'm being eaten by an alligator. It's me. It's I hate Peter Pan. It's, it's very, it's very, it's a crocodile. You know that, right? <laughs> yeah, I know. But, he, but if Captain Hook doesn't know that. Brady is gonna do his best Wendy impression. <laughs> Wendy. I don't have that. Do a British accent. Pizza. <laughs> <laughs> and finally, Ryan's gonna do Nana. Whoa! That was cool! Today at Magic Kingdom, I am doing something for the very first time in I think probably 12 years. I think I computed 2011 was the last trip that I uh, did this ride. If you can't tell by the obnoxious sounds behind me, we are riding Tomorrowland Speedway for the very first episode of the Tomorrowland Speedway podcast. Our guest, well, I'll let her introduce herself. Welcome to the Tomorrowland Speedway podcast. With me is my guest, Emily. Say hi. Hi. <laughs> Emily, first question, how old were you when you got your driver's license? Um, I was 16. <laughs> how, how much did you lie about the hours logged? I did not lie. Um, I did when we, when I had my learner's permit, we drove to California and I drove on Route 66 with just my learner's permit, which is against the law because I didn't have my learner's permit for Texas. So, yep. <laughs> if you were to get caught for that and sentenced to life, one would say life is a highway, am I right? You're right. Yeah. <laughs> I want to ride it all night long. <laughs> Well, you'd be forced to. You'd be. You'd be. You'd be sentenced to life. Have you ever been in a car accident before? Um, yeah, not from me though. Not from my driving. Just with like friends and stuff. And hopefully that's it. <laughs> Have you ever gotten a, a traffic ticket? Yes. Oh, <laughs> story time. What happened? Um, I was when I was back in Illinois. Um, I was driving down this road that's like a speed trap on my way to work one. What time. road is it? I don't remember the road. It was in like um, it was in like Hoffman Estates, Illinois, and yeah. I think I was going like 35 and a 25. I remember this vividly because this is the only traffic ticket I've ever gotten. And I um, was on my way to get my ears pierced for my triple piercings, and I was so excited. And then I got pulled over, and then I cried the entire way to the mall. So <laughs> that was fun. <laughs> for those who don't know, which is absolutely nobody. Uh, I am from about 10 minutes away from where Emily grew up. We both are from like 10 minutes from each other, but we only met each other after uh, Happily Ever After returned. Uh, and we we were hanging out in a group and that's when I met Max and Brady and Emily and 
not Casey that time. Casey the net time after that. Yeah, anyway, so there's there's a little backstory, I guess. I think we're being followed. I think we're, we we're being followed. Yeah, jeez. Right <laughs> what about the five second rule? <laughs> Slam on your brakes. See if they don't. No, wait, hold on. Don't do that. <laughs> okay, Lightning Lane. Um, we're going to do some cards trivia right now. Who played the voice of Chick Hicks? I don't know. <laughs> Michael Keaton. Oh. He also played Beetlejuice and Batman. Oh. What is something, what is a What is a practical car application that Lightning McQueen does not have on his vehicle? A what? Like a, he doesn't have, he doesn't have brake lights or headlights because he's a race car. They're stickers. Is that what you're saying? That is what I'm saying. <laughs> what does Mater teach him how to do in the middle of a, uh, a pasture? Drive backwards. What role does Mater play in Cars 2? Like what is his occupation? Oh, he's a secret agent, right? I don't know. Correct. We don't talk about cars too. We don't talk about cars too. <laughs> okay. Thanks for watching the Tomorrowland Speedway Yay! podcast. Uh, tune in next time. Make sure to like and subscribe. Brady, there's my son. There's my son right there. Good job. I'm proud of you, son. I'm so proud of you, son. I have gotten questions recently uh, in the comments section about what Brady's relation is to me. Uh, he is my son. He is my 28-year-old son. You're 28, right? Yes. Uh, I'm also 28, but he is my son, which is a little ridiculous, but it's also equally as ridiculous as me saying that Kristen is my sister. Um, maybe I cut that part out. I don't want people to know that I'm lying about that. Keep in mind, I'm older than him. And that'll do it. Thank you for watching my dad's vlog, a.k.a. Ryan. Like and subscribe. I hope you enjoyed it. Have a great day. Okay, that was it. Bye.